Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lin Yang. We're following breaking news for the first time since the firing of Commander's head coach Ron Rivera. We're hearing from Commander's managing partner Josh Harris. He is speaking right now really, from Ashburn. Uh, Let's listen in. Leadership. But clearly, um, <clears throat> you know, we weren't good enough this year. We didn't get it done on the field. And uh, so we've decided to go into a new direction. And I think as you probably heard, uh, I'm going to be leading that search both for a head of football operations as well as a head coach. And uh, I'm going to be assisted by uh, my partners, Irvin uh, Magic Johnson, Mitch Rails, and David Blitzer, as well as uh, a couple very well-known uh, sports executives, Bob Myers, who I've known for many years and have a tremendous amount of respect for. And uh, Rick Spielman, who obviously is a 30-year uh, <clears throat> football executive, executive of the year, uh, obviously 10 years with the Vikings. Um, you know, obviously Bob Meyer. Bob Myers built one of the amazing uh, sports teams of the last decade in the Golden State Warriors. Uh, they were tough to compete with, so I got to know him. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, even though uh, this season uh, was uh, hard for me and hard for us, it was hard, it's hard to win four games. Uh, from my point of view, we are coming out of this with um, poised for a great future. Uh, a lot of uh, draft capital, a lot of cap space, uh, and uh, I'm lucky enough to be supported by an amazing ownership group. And obviously, we think we're an attractive destination for, for, for the next generation of leadership. And so, what, what I'm, this is probably amongst the m most important jobs I have as a managing partner. And uh, it's important that I do this personally and get this right, and that we bring in the right leadership. So, with that, I will open it up to whatever questions you might have. Thank you. Josh, John Kine, John Kine, ESPN. I'm curious with, with Bob and Rick, we know the resumes. What is it about them personally that made you want them to get involved, and what will their roles be beyond this search? Yeah, so um, obviously I'll start with Bob. Um, you know, who, Bob, Bob Myers is a winner. Like, who wouldn't want him uh, on your uh, team trying to help your franchise? He knows how to identify talent. He knows how to build winning franchises, winning cultures. I mean, he's obviously not a football person. He's not been around football, but he's an amazing sports executive, and I'm um, you know, really happy to have him helping. Uh, he'll be around uh, as an advisor to me. Uh, he's not going to be involved with X and o X's and O's, uh, but he'll be involved through the search process and beyond you know, as it relates to uh, the Washington commanders helping us uh, build uh, – a, uh, an amazing franchise, an amazing culture, and a winning culture. Uh, obviously, Rick Spielman brings a wealth of football knowledge, uh, the ins and outs of football. Uh, he did, he was executive of the year with the Vikings, you know, with many other teams, and kind of brings that knowledge of football that you need, you know, when you're interviewing uh, candidates. Uh, and so he's going to be helping us through the search process, and we'll see after that. I don't, uh, I'm not sure. Hi, Josh. Uh, Nikki Jeffala with Washington Post. Um, <clears throat> how do you envision the general structure for the front office? You mentioned, obviously, the, the head of football operations, but what is <clears throat> your vision for the structure, and then what are you looking for in candidates to fill that role? Yeah, so we're looking for the uh, best uh, people to build an elite franchise that's going to uh, consistently compete and win championships, so that's kind of our goal. In terms of the structure, uh, obviously, I start with talent. You want the best talent. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you let the talent just, you know, just sort of influence the structure. But my orientation, obviously, is that um, <clears throat> being uh, a, the head of football operations, being, in essence, the, in that lead role, that's an 80-hour-a-week job. Uh, being a head coach, that's an 80-hour-a-week job. Um, I think there are two roles there. Um, and so I think it's harder. I mean, it, there are certainly individuals that control everything. Uh, I think it's increasingly hard. So my orientation is not to do that. But on the other hand, uh, I'm going to let, you know, I'm going to really be somewhat flexible around talent. So that's kind of how I'm going to how I'm going to think about it. And I hope that answer your question a bit. Hey, Josh, David Aldridge with The yeah. Athletic. Um, what about Bob's <clears throat> skill set? made you think he could 
transition across sports to be helpful to you as you start this process? <clears throat> Yeah, I think that he started off, um, you know, with a uh, golden. He started off as a UCLA, UCLA basketball player, winning a national championship. So he started with that. He's been a winner everywhere where he's gone. Uh, but then he was a, a sports agent, so he knows um, everyone in sports. He knows a lot of agents. You know, many agents, as you know, cross sports. Not all, but some. A lot of the uh, agents. He's run, you know, multiple processes to select talent. He knows how to engage with talent, um, and so, and then obviously, the Golden State Warriors' success speaks for itself. Um, you know, they started off as a franchise that was not that was struggling a bit, and they've emerged as you know four-time NBA champions. And he's been able to keep a collection of uh, stars there together for a long period of time. So, look, I, like I said at the beginning, I mean, I think uh, he's gonna, he's going to be super helpful. Hey, Josh, J.P. Finley with NBC4 and 106.7 The Fan. A lot of reporting today about requests for interviews all over the league, coach and GM positions. Ideally, what's your timeline for all this, and what's the timeline for the folks that are still here when they kind of find out their future? Yeah, so I'm going to run a um, thorough but rapid process. I mean, obviously, uh, in, we need the next leadership here because we got a lot of work to do. You know, we have the draft, we have the off season, we have uh, we have you know a lot of draft capital that we need to be get prepared for. Uh, ultimately, free agency uh, combines, but on the other hand, you know this is a really important decision, and so it's going to be a uh, rapid but thorough process. I mean, ideally, uh, you would have the head of the front office in place uh, before you ultimately select a coach, because obviously that's important. Uh, but, you know, look, again, like we're not in full control of the time frame because what we're ultimately trying to do is, is, you know, end up with the best people and, you know, the best people generally have alternatives. So um, that's what I would say in terms of I spoke with um, <clears throat> the front office leadership and, and, the, and the coaching staff, some of the coaches today. And, you know, I appreciate that from their view, from their point of view, there's uncertainty. Uh, but I've just asked them. I've to be a, a part, to bear with us and to just, uh, to do their jobs, right? Uh, to continue to run the football team. Uh, and, you know, everyone to a person has said that they care about the club, they care about the franchise, um, and that they uh, want to be part of the solution. And so, uh, obviously, without uh, the um, head coach and without the head of the front office in place, you know, there's some there's some uncertainty for them, and I respect that and am sympathetic to it. But on the other hand, they're professionals, and and so uh, you know we're working through it. Hey, Josh, Ben Standig with the Athletic. Um, <clears throat> you famously with the Sixers were willing to take a slower rebuild to get things where you wanted them to be. Uh, with <clears throat> coming off a four and thirteen season, how uh, open are you to taking being patient with a rebuild, or do you see this being more of a quicker turnaround? Yeah, listen, um, this was not a fun season for the ownership group. I mean, we're, we're right there with the fans in terms of uh, sweating every loss. Uh, and so, I mean, obviously, if we could write the script, it would be a quick turnaround. But on the other hand, um, you have to make long-term decisions uh, and do things in a very, you know, one person at a time, one athlete at a time. And so sometimes they take longer, right? So I think what my, my view is that we want it to be as quick as we can, but the ultimate goal, right, is to be an elite team that's competing for championships. And so, um, when you do, I find that when you do things quickly, uh, you you know sometimes you know you set yourself back. And so, the, my orientation is to do make the right decisions and uh, let the time frame you know take its own course. Uh, I mean, obviously, I I want a winning franchise quickly, but on the other hand, I. You know, for me, it's about making the right decisions. Michael Phillips, Washington Times, and 910 The Fan. Uh, you've spent a year now with the commanders, the branding, the name. Have you had discussions about where to go from there, and, and what have those been like in terms of the name and the branding? Yeah, as you can see, we're a little busy. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, in addition to uh, basically uh, picking uh, a new head of the front office, a new coach, uh, I see uh, Mark in the front uh, there. Uh, we're busy at work, um, working on uh, the, the next improvements to our stadium. 
uh, in terms of uh, fan experience, in terms of premium areas and fixing a lot of different things and investing in the stadium. We're going to be rolling out a big investment program uh, in the next few weeks, and that there's an enormous amount of detail uh, that the business staff and you know some of the ownership group are working on. And then we've got, obviously, uh, our new home and thinking about that. And so um, the, right now our focus today is on sports first and foremost and then these other things. And so, uh, you know, th those are our focuses right now. Josh Barry, Sverluger from The Washington Post. Back to logistics a little bit. Is it your desire to have a head of football operations in place and that person hires the head coach, or will you do that in concert with that person? How, how will that work out? Yeah, so my desire is to have the head of the football operations in place and then to work to, to listen very hard to what that person wants to do in terms of the coaching staff. In other words, I think those two things have to work together. And obviously, as I've said before, um, I want to um, – um, you know, get the best talent here and then hold them accountable and um, and work with them, right? So what that person wants to do or not do is really important in our decision process. It doesn't mean that you um, are not involved in it, but it means that you're, you know, to a large extent, you're relying on that person to bring a series of candidates to the table. And so that would be my ideal scenario. On the other hand, <clears throat> you know, there are, uh, we have to move quickly here, so uh, it's not perfect, but that's that's my orientation. Hey, Josh, Sam Fortier with The Washington Post. How many candidates do you expect to interview for each position, and are the stakes higher because of how this year went? Yeah, I don't think we want to get into specifics around the process, but um, we've been thinking about who the best candidates are, and so, and I, like I said, I think it's an attractive destination. And truthfully, also, you don't really know who's going to be available. Um, there's still a lot of teams playing. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we we wish we were one of them, uh, but there are a lot of teams playing, and you don't know how all this is going to sort out. And so um, I think that um, we'll have to see uh, where it ends up in terms of numbers, but we're going to run a very thorough process. And anyone who is uh, capable, who we think meets the criterion uh, of being able to lead this franchise and win, which is, is our ultimate goal, then we're going to talk to them. Josh, Steve Wonder from the Associated Press. What did you make of Eric Bieniemy's season as offensive coordinator, and, and will you be considering him for the head coaching vacancy? Yeah, so I've enjoyed working with Eric, and obviously um, he's had success over the years. And um, I'd say that, um, you know, I spoke to Eric today, and, um, you know, he's hard at work managing our franchise, and, and I look forward to um, hearing to hopefully, if I could write the script, um, having a, our senior football operations executive in place and then approaching the coaching search, search with Eric and others. Hey, Josh, how are you? Hey, how are Candace you? Buckner, Washington Post. And um, any of your other franchises in hockey and, and basketball, have you gone to another sport for advice, uh, like getting a baseball guy to help with the Sixers or maybe an NFL <laughs> guy to help with the NHL, just with your advisory um you know look i think that i mean the answer to that is no uh but uh i think that obviously uh high quality people are available across many pursuits uh and so um i think that uh we're always looking for people that can help us uh and so but right now the uh, we're we're happy with the uh, the leadership staff we have at the Devils and the leadership staff we have at the Sixers, and they happen to come out of ba uh, hockey and, and basketball. So we we don't have any uh, baseball or football people in the mix there. <clears throat> Josh Scott Abraham, ABC Seven. Obviously, you mentioned everyone's frustrated. You're frustrated. Fans are frustrated. What's the message you want to give to this fan base to <clears throat> have them believe still that this ship is heading in the right direction? Yeah, so my, my message to the Washington fan base is thank you. You guys showed up in droves. Uh, you believed in us. Uh, we sold out every game, uh, even with a four-win season. Now, granted, there are a few visiting fans there, but that's on us. Uh, we're not in the playoffs. Uh, and, um, and so thank you for showing up. And the future is bright. Uh, we have a lot of cap space. We have uh, a great ownership group. We're very committed to winning for this city. 
and uh, look forward to showing you in addition to telling you over the next series of uh, years. Josh, Chick Hernandez, WSA 9. Um, how, you know, you've been through this before with, with coaches. How difficult was the conversation with Ron Rivera, and was there thought of doing this earlier in the year? Yeah, Ron's a consummate professional, right? Ron's been in the NFL for a long period of time, and I think he appreciated that uh, we weren't, that the team didn't perform this year. And so I think that it was not a surprise, and I think Ron is a good person, a good man. We have a good relate. We continue to have a good relationship. Um, I think he felt um, that he was, and, and I went out of my way to give him uh, the season to perform, and I think there was uh, much appreciation on all sides, and, and he's moving forward, and I'm sure whatever he does with his life, uh, it'll be good and successful. Um, obviously, I think about um, coaches all the time, and I, I don't find that um, changing uh, coaches in the not I, it's not that I've never done it, but I think that uh, moving, uh, changing coaches in the middle of the season uh, isn't tremendously productive. Uh, and I didn't think it was going to be productive here. And I had also committed um, to the city and to Ron when we showed up. We showed up on the eve of training camp. Uh, and I committed to the city and to Ron that, um, that we would give this the season. That's what we did. Uh, Mitch Tischler, Monumental Sports. Um, <clears throat> After being around the NFL for, for the season, how much have you learned about kind of the way NFL operations run? Mm -hmm. And how does kind of the rebuild that needs to happen here compare to um, the state of the franchise, I guess, compare here to some of your other uh, professional sports franchises? Yeah, look, I'm just getting to know the NFL. I mean, obviously, it's been a, a, a good year of a lot of learning, a long year. Obviously, not no, no success on the field. But um, I would say that um, I think there's a lot of ingredients here for success. Uh, I think we have a lot of great players in the locker room. Uh, we have a lot of committed people. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility around the draft and around our ability to spend uh, for free agents and so and a lot of flexibility on our roster and I think we and I think we will recruit uh, amazing individuals on the coaching side and on the front office side so I'm opt I'm pretty optimistic that uh, we're going to be able to move the ball here very quickly. Hey Josh, George Wallace, WTOP Radio. <laughs> a lot of players today were talking about how encouraging and refreshing it was how, when you addressed them this morning. How important is that <clears throat> for you to have that kind of open dialogue with the team, with the players? I think it's very important. Look, at the end of the day, the players are uh, the ones that win games. Owners don't win games, coaches don't win games, players win games, and they see things that you don't always see. They experience the world in a different way. Uh, you know, we're not out there, they are. And so I think it's very important to be having a dialogue with, your, with the players, uh, listening to some of the leadership, listening to how they feel about things. Obviously, ultimately, uh, the decision uh, rests with me and the ownership group as to who the leadership is. So you don't, you don't give away that decision-making authority, but um, I think it's very important to be engaged with your players, particularly the captains and the leadership. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. To be continued. You've been listening to Commander's managing partner Josh Harris hours after head coach Ron Rivera was fired. He talked about wanting to make sure that there was a head of football operations in place and do a thorough but rapid job of then finding a head coach. A lot of questions about the team that he's assembled, this advisory committee who's going to help find that head coach and the uh, head of operations for football. Let's go to team insider J.P. Finley now to... Oh, okay. Sorry. We want to get first and get back to a look at the timeline for Ron Rivera's rocky tenure with Washington. It started in January of 2020. He was there when the team changed its name to the Washington football team after years of backlash there. And he faced more than just battles on the field. In August of 2020, he was diagnosed with cancer. Rivera led Washington to the playoffs in his first season, but lost to Tom Brady and Tampa Bay. The following season was a different story. Washington ended with a 7-10 and 10 record. Then came another big name change to the Washington Commanders. Despite a new name, the Commanders struggled to make the playoffs. They ended last season 8-8-1. Eight and eight and 
Last summer, the Harris Group officially took ownership of the team and that injected some excitement, but a season of a lot of promise once again fell short. So we are hearing from Rivera this afternoon as well. He released a statement reading in part, quote, I want every Washington fan to know how much I appreciate your unwavering support through all the name changes, roster moves, non-football headlines, and seasons that did not meet your expectations. You still stood by this team. We did win an NFC East title in 2020, but we fell short since then, and for that, I am truly disappointed. He goes on to thank Harris, the players, coaches, and the entire Washington community. And Harris himself said that the future is bright. Let's now go to Team Insider J.P. Finley to get more on Josh Harris's statement. All right, J.P., what do you make of what Josh Harris said today? What are your biggest takeaways? I really liked Josh Harris's response that he wants to be thorough but rapid. I, I think this team needs to move forward fast. I, I, I really like the approach he said to structure, where it looks like the coach-centric approach is out the window. Those jobs are all-consuming for, for real NFL franchises. He said, you know, a head of football operations is an 80-hour-a-week job, and a head NFL coach is an 80-hour-a-week job. Those are very hard to coexist. And I think the structure Harris wants to build – is what we see successful around the league, where you have a clear delineation in head coach and the person that's in charge of the operation. I think Commanders fans honestly should be really in enthused about what they heard today. Um, I, I thought Harris kind of nailed it. Sounds like they're going to move really fast to try to get the football operations role filled, and from there you try to find your head coach with that head of operations kind of guiding the, the, the track there. I, I think it was a really encouraging 20 minutes from the Commanders managing partner. And he mentioned assembling this advisory committee to find a head of football operations. He mentioned his partners, Mitch Rails, Magic Johnson, but he also named a basketball guy, uh, Bob Myers, who was the former GM of Golden State Warriors. And a lot of people had questions about that. Tell us more about this advisory committee, JP. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting, right? You've got Mitch Rails, Magic Johnson, David Blitzer. Those guys are already part of the ownership group. Bob Myers has been the general manager of the Golden State Warriors. They've had an incredible amount of success in Golden State, and it goes beyond just selecting Steph Curry. They've built an organization that has, built, that has won multiple championships. Keep in mind that Harris comes from the NBA, so he probably has a long relationship with Myers. Not to mention Magic Johnson has a pretty long resume in the NBA as well, so... <laughs> One thing that was important is Harris explained that Myers isn't going to be looking at the X's and O's of potential football candidates. They understand that Myers' expertise is basketball. But at some point, this is about leadership and structure and how you're going to run a multi-billion dollar business. That's where Myers can help you. And if somebody thinks just because he was in basketball and this is football that there aren't some skills that translate, I think they'd be quite wrong. The other big name that we've heard is Rick Spielman, who is the former general manager of the Minnesota Vikings. Now, the Vikings never broke through and had that Super Bowl or, or really even like an NFC championship level of success, but they were good for a while, and they were well run. They drafted well. Uh, you know, Spielman was there when they signed Kirk Cousins. This is a guy that knows how to operate at a high level in the NFL and to build kind of that perennial playoff team, which Washington has not been. And, and, I, and I think both of these guys' roles make a lot of sense. Sounds like the way Harris said it, Meyer's role could extend for some time. Now, he's an advisor and a consultant, whereas Spielman seems like it has some sort of finish line on it when they, when they maybe hire the new head of football ops. But both these guys should be able to help the organization. Right. He did say that he is a winner. Myers is a winner, and that was important to him. J.P. Finley, thanks so much for your insight. I know you'll have the very latest coming up on News 4. And so what comes next for the Commanders? Our coverage will continue this afternoon on News 4 at 4. You can also find the latest on the NBC Washington app and NBCWashington.com. I'm Yang. We'll see you right back here for News 4 at 4. Thanks for joining us.